And what a peachy! I just thought I'd do a wee quick video on the wee Picoscope 2000 series. Very popular wee starter scope. It has its limitations, but it's still good and you can help it out if uh, you know what you're at. So a Wii 2000 series, you buy these for about a hundred quid, and for a laptop scope, it's uh, it's really worth it is worth the money. In the automotive, you can do a hell of a lot with this. I use it uh, quite a bit, and uh, it's it's the, the the main strength is the Pico software is fantastic, and uh, very user friendly. And for a, a scope user, a novice scope user, who's learning, this is to me this is the way to go. Now, a lot of people say, oh, it should, you know, you've, you're bait with only two channels and all that there. You can still do a cram count correlation with this. You can test any sense that you want and, you know, you can have a look and see what's happening. So a scope, you know, it measures voltage and, you know, it's basically a DVOM. Only you can see what's happening with the DVOM. You only see the numbers. So uh, this way one does have its limitations. Now, it's, as you can see, plus or minus 20 volt peak there, maximum input. So any more than that, and uh, you get damage that. So, yeah, we all know you can stick an attenuator on it, and, you know, that'll multiply it by the factor of whatever the attenuator is, 20 to 1 is the usual one. And uh, that'll throw her up to, uh, you can test a... Uh, Primary ignition and injectors without any problems at all. And I've done it loads and loads of times. And the the other sort of problem it has, it's, well, it's only 10 megahertz. And if you go up to the 2205A, which is about 160 quid, it jumps up to 25 megahertz. Now, that's that bandwidth is the same as the 4425 automotive one. So, you know, it's it's not lacking that much. Now, it is, a, it is you can see it sometimes with uh, high frequencies, but it'll still read a CAN signal, and uh, there's no problem at all that way. I'll give you an example. Avantage Pro, the Snap-on Avantage Pro is three. So, anywho, uh, the 2-2, any, anything that has a, the 2 at the start, of the number is the 2000 series, as in the four being the 4000 series. And then the second number, 2204, is the number of channels. So a 2405A, for example, will be a four channel version. And the specs go up and up uh, with regards to the, the sample rate. Now what lets this one down a wee bit is the uh, memory buffer. But there's a workaround around that, if you know what you're at. Now, I'm just going to show you an wee thing, but I'm not going to tell you how to do it. Uh, if I'm running a 2000 series scope on Pico 6 Automotive, so it is doable. And it's no real big advantage, to be quite honest with you, because, you know, see all that information that's in there? You, you, you know, you can, whatever you want, you can copy and paste that over in the Pico so Cope 6, you know, the ordinary one. If I can work this here with one hand. So it opens up a, uh, you know, like a help page and then it sets it up for whatever you're wanting to do. But you can still get that, you know, you can, you can copy and paste that over uh, without having to do the wee hack which I'm not going to show anybody how to do that. But for people that say it's not possible, well, there it is. It is possible. I just did it. Just to show you. But as I say, there's no real advantage to it. Another simple way we can help our wee 2204A is now I have a... We just simply unplug the charger from the laptop and uh, with nothing plugged in at all there. So it's just background noise we're seeing there and it's well zoomed in. And yeah, it's uh, 
50 milliseconds per division, but it's zoomed, it's zoomed away at the minute. And just I'll give you a wee example of that. I'll get you down to here. And we're simply just going to unplug the laptop from the charger. And let's see what difference that makes. Yeah, so good bit of that noise is gone. And uh, let me see if I if I just go into it, zoom back any zoom, um, zoom back out to just our flat line there. We'll put our charger back in again. Now a lot of people probably knew this, you know, this is pretty standard stuff, but just in case you didn't, and uh, you're a new scope user, so there's a good bit more noise in the signal with the charger plugged into the laptop. Just another wee capture of that, and uh, that's with the charger plugged in, and that's with it unplugged. So yeah, it cleans it up pretty significantly just by doing that one wee trick. So another way of improving our scope's performance is if, well, it works in two different modes. So if we get up our, our properties box here, so view properties, and we can see we're at 100 milliseconds per division, um, 100 kilosamples, and that's reflected over here in that properties box. So that's a real time monitoring of what the actual sample rate of the capture actually is. So it's worthwhile keeping that up. And in, in this demonstration, we'll, we'll be able to see what's actually going on here. So currently this uh, 224A, it's, there's nothing still connected to it. So that's, that's just uh, background noise there. And uh, uh, it's running in blocked mode. So what is blocked mode and streaming mode? And what am I talking about? So if we go into specs there, we can see here, it talks about the buffer memory and in brackets, blocked mode. And our Wii 2204, the 10 megahertz one here, is only eight there. And as we go up the range, it goes to 16, 48, 32, and so on and so forth. So this is, this is the smallest scope and uh, it has the smallest buffer memory. So that is a real problem with this Wii scope because what that basically is, is it's the storage inside the scope. So if we click on that, it'll give us a wee pop-up bubble. So this is the default mode used by the PicoScope software. The scope stores data in the internal buffer memory and then, and then processes it and transfers it to the PC before starting the next block. So we have a very small buffer memory. It's only eight kilosamples there. So if we come out of that, and this next buffer memory down here is across the board, 100 megasamples shared between active channels so usb streaming mode so there we go we'll put that up see what that says in this mode data is processed directly to the pc with buffering provided by the picoscope internal buffer memory this enables long periods of slow data collection for child recorder login applications as well as fast usb streaming so we can improve our, our sample rates if we make sure it's in that streaming mode and it doesn't use the, the, the memory at all. So we'll go back to our capture here. So at the minute we're in block mode and it's using the buffer memory. So to get it in the streaming mode then this particular uh, scope, all scopes, you know, they may be different. But this particular one is once you go to 200 milliseconds per division time base, it goes into streaming mode. So if we notice the, the line there is a bit thicker, I mean, clearly the time base has changed. 
but the line's a bit thicker, and that's because there's more data being sampled. And you can see the number of samples has went up there to 100,000. And the sample rate is 50 kiloseconds per second. So if we increase this, now, let's see now. We'll bring that right up, and we'll see our sample rate increasing as we go. So we'll bring it right up. We'll bring it right up. There's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll just leave it there. But it's not really changing the sample rate. So that's about it maxed out. So if we just uh, go down again. Six, five, four, three, two, one. So at one, it's showing 500 kilo samples per second. And two, that's it probably maxed out there. That's, a bit, that's as much as we'll get. Now, if we increase the time base there, we'll see that sample rate comes down because it, it's taken more samples. It's taken more time and, and therefore more samples. So the rate comes down with time. So we'll just, uh, we'll try it, we'll put that up. Oh, well, we're gonna increase it further there. So it's worthwhile having this properties box up so you can, you can see, you can increase your, your sample rate and you can get more data then. So more data means more resolution, more, uh, more information in your, in your capture. That's us in streaming mode. So we'll just take her back down and go into blocked mode again. So we can see immediately when we went to 100 milliseconds per division, our number of samples reduced dramatically, uh, you know, so because it's in that different mode. So another thing that it's worthwhile keeping in mind for performance is We'll have channel A running, just channel A, and we're gonna turn on channel B. So it's channel B on, and if we notice, our sample rate has halved because it's sharing the memory between the two, the two channels. So every scope will do that, the big 4425, the popular one, the automotive one, it does that as well. But it isn't as detrimental because uh, it has a higher buffer memory. So I'm just taking that off again. We'll go back up into streaming mode and we'll just give it a second and we'll turn on channel B again and we'll see that the sample rate and the number of samples hasn't changed. So turn it off and turn it on. The sample rate and the number of samples stays the same, whereas before it halved. So that's fine. <laughs> you may think to yourself, oh, well, 200 milliseconds per division, that's too high, high time base for what I want to do. So what I'm saying here is what you can do is make sure you're in, if, you know, you're in that mode and then what you can do then is from there, then you simply, you know, use your zoom function. And you can look into the, the data. So they will have a full, a full screen of data there. And what we can then do is, now this is an 8-bit machine, but we can enhance the resolution by just selecting a larger number of bits and we can see a lot more data. Now if we do that in block mode, we'll just change it back to 8 bits, we'll come out of that zoom and we'll do the same thing again, only this time we'll knock it down to 100 where it's in block mode so it's, it's using the buffer memory and we'll stop that capture 
So we'll stop not capture. And we'll do the same thing again. We'll zoom in a couple of times. And we'll see, and we'll just go back one. We'll see that. And then we'll use our resolution enhancement there and we we'll see the result. So you see that there's a lot more data in the original mode because the sample rate just isn't there in this mode. So there we go. And uh, as I say, all scopes work in this same sort of principle. And it's just the, to get the most out of your 2204, if you have a smaller scope, then it's maybe worthwhile to have that properties box up and you'll know what your, your rates are, your sample rates and the number of samples you're taking in your capture. And then you just zoom, zoom back down then from there and, uh, and you'll, you'll get a lot more information uh, in, your, in your capture. So there you go. Hope that all made sense. Hopefully uh, it gives you a wee bit more on the operation and uh, you maybe get a wee bit more out of your scope. So people think the Wii 2000 series is limited and all. Well, it is, and it only has two channels. And a lot of people will say, oh, to do automotive, you need four channels. And yes, when you're up into pulse sensors and you're looking for reference waveforms and then you're actually measuring something, you're maybe measuring current at the same time, you, you maybe do you need the four channels. And, uh, but the, the two channel, the 2204, for to get you accustomed and to get you to navigate around this uh, this software package, uh, you know it's a fantastic starter scope, and uh, I still use it um, for measuring sensors, and you know you can see dropouts and actuators moving and stuff like that. It's perfect and dead on for that application. So okay, I think that's it. Hopefully you got something out of that. Thank you very much for watching. As ever. And all the best, and bye-bye.